So I have my hand something right here that Will growing up genuinely would not have been able to comprehend. This is an eight terabyte NVMe SSD attached to a Thunderbolt 3 interface that you can just plug into your computer and get insane read and write speeds out of. And it just fits in the palm of your hand or your pocket. When I was growing up, my first flash drive was 128 megabytes. And then they started having one gigabyte flash drives and that was a big deal. But now we have eight terabytes all in one tiny package that just goes right into your computer and is insanely fast. So this external SSD is made by a company called Glyph and they reached out and sent it to me. It is not sponsored by them. They do have a coupon code, but it's not an affiliate program at all. I get zero money for them. I do, however, get to keep this thing because it's absolutely awesome. And that is it. And they essentially make very, very, very fast external storage drives really marketed towards video production houses, photographers, and everybody in that creative ecosystem who just needs really fast, really reliable storage. And since the explosion of storage and NVMe drives, they have been able to package them smaller and smaller with more and more space. And so this right here is pretty much the top line product you can buy. And genuinely, this kind of thing was not possible even a couple of years ago. NVMe drives have gotten so much faster and so much smaller. And so they can have so much more capacity than they could, even just like two or three years ago. This is one of those cases where storage has exploded in growth in places where hard drives really have not increased that much. It used to be like a one or two terabyte NVMe drive was a big deal. Now, very shortly after, we're at eight terabytes. And so it's really exploded in a very short amount of time. But this is a NVMe SSD that is hooked up to a Thunderbolt 3 bus. And so it can just plug into your laptop or computer just over Thunderbolt speeds. And it is ripping fast because of that. So one thing that is a limitation about this, which is both a good and a bad thing, is it uses Thunderbolt 3. Thunderbolt is an Intel proprietary format. They're open sourcing it kind of, it's a whole thing. But that means that if your port is USB-C and not Thunderbolt, then it's not gonna work with this. So you would have to buy a specific, I think they even sell a USB-C version of this. But this is not a USB drive, this is a Thunderbolt drive. And there is a difference because of the way protocols work. And so you just need to make sure you get the one that matches yours. But Thunderbolt allows you to get much, much faster speeds than USB. Though USB 4 should be catching up, but still there's some limitations with that. And throughout the years, I've gone through a lot of drives. This right here was the first really fast USB drive I ever bought. It was awesome. It was really expensive. It was USB 3. It was 32 gigabytes and it was waterproof. It had a little waterproof case that you would put on your keychain. Then we went through and had the external drives. And then like a lot of people, I ended up with the Samsung T3, T5, and then T7s, which have been absolutely awesome. They're very small and decently fast, but they tend to cap out at about 500 megabytes per second. Or for something like this, a one gigabyte per second, if it's completely empty and it slows down pretty quickly. But one of the real advantages of this is not only the speed, but also the size and the consistent performance. That's actually one of the things that has really stood out to me more so than a lot of other stuff about this drive right here is the sustained performance specifically. I actually was fortunate enough to talk to the owner of the company and he's just one of those guys who is obsessed with testing and getting the right product in there. And the nice thing about this is it does not slow down once you've been writing to it for more than like 20 minutes. I was able to do a DD test, basically just dumping data to it. And it averaged like 2.6, 2.7 gigabytes per second the entire time for 20 minutes straight, which was over three terabytes. And so one issue a lot of people have with drives, and I've had it definitely in the past, is you get really good performance for the first like 100 gigs. And then after that, it's no longer in that really fast caching layer. Instead, now it has to be directly written to the SSD and it slows down a lot. I've been happy to say that maybe this thing's cache is just absurdly large, but I genuinely think that the controller on here is just fast enough to keep up with everything because I wrote three terabytes to it and it was still chugging along at 2.6. I think, I think it did slow down to about 2.6 right at the end gigabytes per second. But compared to something like my really nice t Samsung T7, it would get about half full and then it would slow down. 
I started that DD test on this thing, three terabytes already filled up with it. And so I was adding over three terabytes to that. So I was already maxing out the drive. And that's one thing that you really find when you mess with a lot of SSDs is you find how slow they can get when they're full. I'm happy to say it's not there. I promise this is not sponsored by them or anything like that. They just sent me the thing and there's no finances going across. I've just really been impressed by this. And I think it serves a really big purpose that a lot of people have. And so the biggest workflows I think see with a device like this are really kind of three different things. One is going to be probably the most common, and that is what a lot of film sets are going to use and a lot of photography sets are going to use. And where you're on set and you're constantly recording to a bunch of different cards and you need to do backups regularly and be able to get all the footage off all these different devices at the end of the day. And that is one place where genuinely I have heard from clients, time is money because copying stuff off takes so long. And so what happens is at the end of the day of shooting, basically all the different cards that have recorded all the different footage will be copied to probably two of these different devices and you go home with two different people. And so you'd copy all that media from all the shooting for the day or even intermittently throughout the day and you would copy it to two different devices and then those two different storages would go home with two different people to make sure you kind of got a redundant backup of everything that has gone on that day so you don't have to reshoot. And that genuinely I've heard from people who are on shoots Time is money there because you do not want to be the one who has to have the generator running just so you can keep copying your stuff off. And so I see that as a really big reason. And having 2.6 to 2.7 gigabytes per second writing in means you are going to saturate. You're going to be able to handle even the fastest media. Pretty much the fastest cards out today are going to be CF Express type B cards and their max read speeds. And once again, max read speeds are 1.7 gigabytes per second, 1.8 gigabytes per second, somewhere around there. And that is actually because these are PCIe cards, funny enough. They're actually NVMe devices, essentially. So having something like this means you can actually copy two of those at once, and you're hardly going to be under what the theoretical performance is. And so that kind of stuff can really just save time on set. And so the second really use case I see for this is going to be video production actually editing and everything off of one single drive it is really nice so i actually normally edit off of a nas but i've been moving and had to take down all the servers and then before that i was also in utah for a week so before i went to utah i just copied the entire contents of my video editing nas all the active projects right onto the drive and then just whenever i was on the plane or anything just plugged in copied whatever i needed to to my hard drive and was just able to edit on the plane going that is a really nice thing to have. And that's actually a workflow I've been using for a while. And that is definitely where I found that this drive shined a lot better than the previous one I was using, which was the Samsung T7. So that you would get like the 900 megabytes per second, 800 megabytes per second when you're first copying something. And then it would always just slow down. It would slow down so quickly whenever you're doing sustained copy. Sometimes I was only getting like 300 megabytes per second writing to it. That's even when it was only like two or 300 gigs full of the two terabyte drive in there. So it's just one of those things where that cache was meant for good numbers, but then as you had sustained rights, it just kind of slowed down, unfortunately. And that is genuinely something I found where I'm at the airport and I'm about to get on the plane. And obviously you can't have a hard drive hanging off your computer when you're on the plane and I'm copying. I'm like, it's going to be a while before this thing finishes. Genuinely, I had a much better experience with this because it was just ripping through the entire time and it did not have that slowdown that i found with the samsung i will say it gets warm but not hot i've definitely had fast drives before that get pretty toasty especially nvme drives can get pretty toasty this thing it's got a fair amount of rubber on there but it definitely does not overheat even when i'm doing those extended ones though you will feel it and it does feel pretty warm on the rubber but it's not something where it's like uncomfortable to have around or anything like that, which I have found before, especially with 10 gig equipment. And that's the second workflow I really see a lot of people using this for is I need a really fast drive that I can just dump stuff to and dump it back and not think twice about it because the copies happen so fast. I've definitely gotten in that kind of workflow where it's like, oh, I'll just copy that to there and have it really fast and not think twice about it, which has been a lot of fun. And so the third real use case I see for something like this is video production. Video production has massive footage, needs really fast speeds to it. And keeping a DAS, I've done a video in the past about it. 
In a lot of cases, DAS, which this is direct attached storage, can be a lot simpler than a NAS, especially if you don't have a ton of employees and you really just need really fast speeds and really simple setups. A NAS is very complicated. I'm a huge fan of having a NAS for your setup, but it's very complicated. Whereas something like this is very simple and also gets you better speeds. To get equivalent speeds, even close to the speeds you can get here, you need to go for a 25 gig setup. And it is hard to actually get file transfer speeds and be able to actually play back footage at 25 gig speeds whenever you're on a NAS, just because of the overhead of the networking protocol and things like that. And so having something like this is really a lot easier for people who are just starting out and need only maybe one or two computers and it's fine just swapping the drive back and forth or even for people who are grading really, really, really high bitrate footage that they just don't wanna go for a full fiber optic connection and trying to deal with a NAS on that because of the added expense and just complication to that. So there's some like Sony Vega footage that is like 1.3 gigabytes per second that you just can't play back off of a 10 gig setup. And so something like this, you actually could get the full frames on. All right, and so now let's just go ahead and do some pretty dumb quick benchmarks just doing the good old time and see. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull up some footage here. Some good old full quality ProRes footage. That's 105 gigabytes. I'm just gonna pull out a timer here. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and drop this on in and start it. We're gonna do a quick test of the read speeds. We're only doing that. and stop in about 39.8, so 40 seconds. So 105 gigabytes divided by 40 seconds is over 2.6 gigabytes per second, including all the time to actually speed up and everything like that. It is genuinely just really fast. And the copy backs tend to be pretty much the exact same speed. We are about half full, 3.4 terabytes of eight terabytes, so a little under half full and the copy still should be the same. I'm gonna do the exact same thing I just did and hit start. And so you do see that there is a slight speed difference. The reads are a little bit slower than, the reads are a little bit faster than the writes, pretty normal for that, but it's still over that 2.6 gigabyte per second mark of genuine actual testing. All right, yeah, 40 seconds versus 41 seconds, so. Yeah, 2.56. This is with overhead and with the overall slowdown of all this, it is awesome in that sense. That is one of the nice things about this. And don't worry, I did much more in-depth tests with actual DD with only two streams, I believe. And for writing to it, I was actually able to sustain that 2.7 gigabytes per second until it did kind of dip down at the end to 2.6. But that's it. So that is one of the nice things about having a drive that's that large and still able to work when it is very full, which SSDs actually do not do as much as you'd think they are, just because something like a QLC drive, which I believe they said that this is a TLC drive, so triple layer flash rather than quadruple layer flash, those slow down after you get through a very fast caching section. They slow down because writes to them take a while because you've got to go through and execute all this data and a lot of stuff like that. And so that's what this is. And so the big question you have to ask yourself is, is this worth the price? Because right now it's on sale for $1,400. That's because of World Backup Day is March 31st, I believe. And so you'll see a lot of storage is on sale during that time. But it can retail for as much as $2,000 stock. I do have a discount code and I will have that in the description below and explanations on them. I think they're gonna send two over, one of them for stuff that's on sale right now and one of them for stuff that is not on sale. And so, $1,400 I think is a very good deal for something like this, but then for $2,000, it's definitely gotta be a question of, is it worth it to you? So if you know you need the fastest drive and eight terabytes is exactly what you need, there are a lot of people out there who would not blink at $2,000 because of a genuine cost savings to them because time is money and things like that. But for people who do not, it is a high, high, high price point and they do have other drives for that but it's really got to be one of those things that this product is not for people who are looking for a budget thing that is cheap. 
This is for people who are looking for something that is high performance, high reliability, and genuinely the kind of company that they can just talk to and call up and say, hey, I've got an issue with it. What's going on? It is really designed for, well, honestly, Mac OS and post-production and actual production teams. And for that, that's really their customer base. And I think those people will not find flaws in it because genuinely after running around with it for the past month, I've not been able to find any places where it really slows down. And I've put it through its paces and it absolutely rips. All right, well, that's gonna be it for this. Thank you to Glyph for sending this on over. It has been a blast and I'm absolutely gonna keep it as part of my workflow and it's gonna replace all my other drives essentially. And check them out in the description below. All right, have a good one, bye.